We have a little segment on this show. It's called... I'll take my pants off now. Nope. Oh. Lies our boss told us. Uh? What is the greatest fabrication you were told in ECW? And there's, I know I'm sure there's a lot. And we're not <laughs> shooting on this. Game. No. We kind of are. Where it's I, all in jest. I, I don't consider anything that was told to me a lie. I will say there were humorous situations. Okay. So I'll go back to my contract negotiation. Of $6,000. I would have so, 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 so Paul comes to me, and I, I had a deal I was very happy with, and I was super loyal to Paul at a time when Lance Storm is in WCW, and he's begging me to go there, telling me he can get me 250 right? But I won't leave Paul like that, because to me, in my mind, Paul gave me my opportunity and I'm loyal to Paul. So I'm like, no, I'm not leaving. My, I got another year on my contract. Paul comes to me and whether he got wind of it or what, he goes, I want to talk to you about renegotiating. I said, I got a year left. He goes, I want you for longer. I said, okay, Paul, tell me how long. I want you for life. And I was like, I don't think that's a legal term. Um, so Paul, I, Paul said five years. And I said, well, why don't we do three? Because then if it's going good, then we can talk. Okay, no problem. Three. How much money do you want? I said, how much do you want to give me? Like, I think I'm being pretty good about this. How much do you want to pay me? And I said, it's not a negotiation. I'll take whatever you want to give me. That was what I told him because I love Paul. And I love the opportunity. No, you come up with a number. You go home, you come up with a number. I'm like, oh, cry. Okay. So Paul, it's, you know, it's his own fault. He would see me and he would always go, hello, top heel in the company. He would always say that. Paul told Chris Jericho, and hey, Paul's smart, knowing it gets back to me. Paul told Chris Jericho, Don Callis, the best pure heel I've ever had here in terms of getting heat. So I'm like, okay, he's telling me I'm the top heel in the company. I'm also the color commentator. All right, Joey Styles is making a lot of money. I didn't know exactly what, but I had an idea, and it was in that ballpark number-wise. I knew what guys like Rob were making. So I went, okay, I'm not going to ask for Rob Van Damme money, but I'm going to ask for this, knowing I won't get it, and I'll settle for four and a half or something. So I tell him six grand a week. And he, he looks at me and I right away realized I'd made a horrible mistake because he looked at me like, oh my God, what the hell is this guy doing? So Paul at that point told me, he goes, he said, okay, give me some time. So came back a couple days later and he goes, all right, here's, I can give you that money. So if we run these house shows and we draw 6,000 people, then on that week, I can give you that money. And if we draw 5,000 people, I can give you this money. There's a whole formula. I listened to it. I looked at Paul and I go, there's only one problem. He went, what? And I go, we don't run buildings that big, nor do we draw that many people. And I don't think it's going to happen in the next you know, couple of months. So that was the end of that discussion. And the very next week, and you were involved in this, the very next week, the Pro Wrestling Torch, lovely, lovely uh, uh, sheet, wrote that I had heat in the locker room. First time it had ever been reported there. I had lots of friends there. And I'm like, okay, there what is this? There was no heat in our locker room. Right. And I went to Tommy Dreamer because I didn't know you that well, but people said, talk to Dreamer. He won't bullshit you, right? I went to you, I told you, and you looked at me and you went, you have heat with only one person in this company. Paul Heyman, and I'm not even sure why. And I'm like, well, I know why, because last week I asked for 6000 a week like a dumbass. So that Probably was it. Because Paul was the one who put it in the sheets. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> Hang on, I get to go from sweatshirt. I'm sweating. The pants come off now, too? No. Okay. I'm waiting for my opportunity. Oh, that was awesome. Great story. I'm actually sweating because you were... You're so excited. And the 6000 Can we play Tommy Ball now? No. Okay. It doesn't exist. We're in ECW right now. Donnie Balls? Um, I sent Paul a contract as well for me. Mm -hmm. And I had turned down WCW three times. And uh, the greatest part about it was kind of the same thing. Write up your own contract. <laughs> and pretty much saying, you're here forever. You're right. here for... And I think I would probably like could have been the undertaker of the of ECW, and um, <clears throat> so, and plus I had the most to gain if I stayed. Because you I, predictably you have a piece of something if yes. it's yeah. And I'm paying bills for the company. Right. I'm a mark. I had rich parents. Do I have you to thank for some of those paychecks I got? Huh. I, I, I hardly had any checks that bounced, and I'm, I'm thanking you because that was good yeah, my if you paid those. Well. My dad's dead, by the way. Um, feel bad. So uh, I had like a 
this was probably like nine when we started having a sign guys because this is probably around 98 and like my first year i think i asked for a hundred and fifty thousand dollars that was it and i'm doing everything you that would not have made you even close to the highest paid guy in the company Correct. by the way but, but i was under that assumption i knew so you're not about greedy it. like me you were no. like yeah because i knew and then like the second year it was going to be like it was probably like it was like a prorated deal, and if I did pay per views, mm -hmm. like I was like, ten, we're doing, we're doing ten pay per, uh, we're doing what, four pay per views a year. It was like ten grand a pay per view. So that's, I'm going all this bonus money plus like I help put the video game deal together, all this stuff. Right. Like by week five, by year five, I was making half a mil mm. like that, and Paul was like, I will sign this. Cool. I never had that contract signed. Then I would go back to it as my money was. Uh, I'm in debt. I remember one time I was like, Paul, I'm in debt. It's like 60 grand and my parents, Paul. And like, he's like, take it out of the concession money. I was like, we're not making 60 grand, <laughs> right? Go sell some popcorn. <laughs> so, no, like t-shirts. Yeah, I know. And there so, was a uh, lot of t-shirt oh, money. Every great boxes full of money. Correct. Yeah. So anyway, but he never signed that. So now ECW goes away. You're floating around the world. So 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 EC, so so here's what happened. So ECW last show January the twentieth or something in Hammerstein, and Paul's telling us everything's okay. I kind of know it's not. At that point, um, Lance calls me and goes, "Look, are you flying home through Minneapolis? Because WCW's in Minneapolis." He goes, let's get together for a coffee. So unbeknownst to me, he introduces me to Johnny Ace and blah, 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 and Bischoff. And it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, let's have a talk. I said, I'm not doing anything until Paul tells me there's no more company. Because I'm just that loyal to Paul Heyman. And so I went on a holiday for two weeks. And when I came back, it, it became, it was clear that ECW was done, but that Eric Bischoff was putting together uh, an ownership group uh, with funding uh, the Fusion Group to buy WCW. So I get a phone call one day and it's Eric Bischoff. And he says, I want to reboot Nitro probably in, I think it was May. And he said, I want you and Joey Styles as my commentary team. And I'm thinking at the time, this is great because I'm going to get paid great. I, commentary at that time was my favorite thing to do because you got to put everyone over, no bumps, no drama. Why I'm like, great. I'm like, great. Well, and if you talk to Scott Demore, he always laughs when I say that because I took a ton of bumps when I wrestled. Well, I took my kind of bumps. I didn't take dumb bumps. But anyway, lesson for the boys out there. Uh, I, I took ba I took backdrops and top rope beals and stuff because I could take them. I did not let people throw me on my head. Anyway, um, so I think I'm set. So now, like a month later, I'm out in the most expensive area of Winnipeg shopping for a house because I'm like, well, I'm going to be making... 275 300 doing this this gig for the job that you don't have right it's a wrestler and uh and and someone called me and said the fusion deals off um you know it fell apart and i'm like so i went from the penthouse literally to the outhouse and we were now in what i would term a monopoly situation where there was one company i used to say when people say how hard is it to make it in wrestling i'd say imagine you're a lawyer and worldwide there's there's three companies or three law firms you can get hired at and that's it. What would your odds be? They go terrible. I go, that's the wrestling business, except it's worse because it's actually a subjective business, right? Now it's one company. Now it's one company and a company where I had heat supposedly. And so I'm like, but that didn't even register to me. My mind was in a monopoly situation, top, top guys are going to do fine. But guys like me who are looking to make a name and et cetera, et cetera, are not probably going to do fine. I'm not going to be able to leverage one off the other as we were all doing at the time. And so I went, I'm not even going to try. And I remember uh, Jericho was there, obviously, and may have been world champion at the time. He called me and he goes, I can get you back in. And I said, please don't even bring my name up. I'm done. And I retired. Um, I went back to school. I, my intention was to do my MBA, but the problem was that my grades were, for one of my years, were so poor that I had to redo a bunch of intro courses. So there I was uh, in, in redoing intro psych with 18-year-olds with my long hair and my suntan just coming off national television, and these kids are going, what's Cyrus doing in our intro psych class? Like, it was humbling, for sure. Absolutely. 